Magandang araw sa inyong lahat and welcome to our first ever pre-recorded lecture for the subject NCM 107, Concepts in Pediatrics. My name is Jeff Lee Reboron and I will be in your instructor for this session. Today, we will be embarking on an enlightening journey into the world of pediatrics where the care and well-being of our youngest patients take center stage. But before we dive into the intricate details of this fascinating field of pediatrics, let us set the foundation by first understanding the very essence of this subject, which is pediatrics and obstetrics. As future nurses, you should be able to understand the core of both obstetrics and pediatrics. You have to remember that obstetrics and pediatrics are two crucial branches of medic medical science that plays a pivotal role in safeguarding and nurturing the life from its earliest stages. Obstetrics focuses on the care of pregnant women, guiding them through the remarkable journey of pregnancy, childbirth, and even postpartum period or after they deliver their baby. Now, you have to remember that obstetrics is derived from the Greek word obstare or to keep watch. And uh, that means that we give care to the woman during childbirth. So you have to remember that obstetrics centers on pregnancy, childbirth, and even postpartum. On the other hand, pediatrics is dedicated to the health and wellness of infants, children, adolescents, and we ensure their physical, mental, and emotional development that is nurtured optimally when we speak of pediatrics. Pediatrics also is derived from a Greek word which means spice or child and this is a branch of medical science that caters to the life and the needs of children below 18 years old. So you have to remember that obstetrics focuses on pregnancy, delivery, and postpartum, while pediatrics focuses on the life and the development, the growth and illnesses, and health of children below 18 years old. So these are two distinct branches of medical science. Now even though obstetrics and pediatrics are both medical sciences, we nurses can still insert ourselves in these kinds of disciplines or fields. Now, saan ba tayo pumapasok as nurses? Maternal and child health nursing can be visualized within a framework in which we nurses use our nursing processes, our nursing theories, and our evidence-based practices that are rooted in research to care for families during childbearing and child-rearing years. Anong ibig sabihin nito? We nurses can help our doctors to care for the pregnant mother, the growing fetus, and also the growing child. Kaya po, meron at meron po tayong silbi when it comes to obstetrics and pediatrics. We have a very big role to fill as nurses. Like I said, nurses are superheroes in pediatrics and obstetrics. Because in pediatrics, we nurses comfort the sick kids. We teach parents how to take care of their children. In obstetrics, we guide pregnant mothers. We connect them to doctors and other families and other healthcare practitioners. And we nurses offer these pregnant mothers both medical help and even emotional support during their pregnancy. Our kindness as nurses, our skills and knowledge as nurses make a big difference for both kids and mother. Now, the nursing process that we use as nurses is crucial in obstetrics and pediatrics. It's a structured approach with five steps. Alam nyo naman po yung ating nursing process. Kasama na dyan ang ating assessment, diagnosis, planning, implementation, and even evaluation. So, that nursing process, we can use that to guide our care for the pregnant woman and new mothers. In pediatrics, we can also use our nursing process to ensure a tailor-fit uh, care for children's medical and emotional needs. Ginagamit natin yon to deliver the services, the care that both the pregnant women and children need. Okay, This process, nursing process, involves or improves communication outcomes. It also improves coordination in healthcare 
and it, because of our presence in both fields of pediatrics and obstetrics, it leads to better results for both mother and kids. Lagi nyong tatandaan that doctors cannot do this alone. They are not able to care for pregnant women and children alone. Kasama po dapat tayong mga nurses and that is the reason why we have what we call maternal and child health nursing. As future maternal and child health nurses, you need to know your focus. So we have four phases of healthcare. Lagi nyong tatandaan po na as nurses, we function or we center on health promotion. We educate our clients to be aware of good health through health teaching and even role modeling. So ang ginagawa natin is we both teach the expectant mothers, the pregnant women, and even the parents of these children on how to promote or improve their health status. Isa po yun sa ating focus in healthcare, in maternal and child nursing. Aside from that, we also ensure health maintenance as maternal and child nurses. We intervene to maintain health when risk of illness is present. Anong ibig sabihin nito? If we see someone who has a strong familial history of diabetes, we give them the knowledge that they need, the skills that they require so that this um, risk of illness will not be a full-blown disease. So, ibig sabihin nito, we help the community, our patients, prevent getting diseases. Okay? Like, for example, in the case of the COVID-19 pandemic, okay, we knew that there was a risk for people to be infected of the virus. So, how did we maintain their health? We asked them to do social distancing. We asked them to go for vaccination. And we ask them to, do, to, to undergo screening. Things like that can help maintain the health of individuals. Aside from that, it is also our job as nurses to ensure health restoration. And how do we do, what, do that? By promptly helping doctors in the diagnosis and treatment of present illnesses using our interventions that will return our clients to wellness as rapidly as we can. Ibig sabihin, isa din sa mga roles natin as nurses, ang tulungang gumaling yung isang pasyenteng may sakit. Okay? So, we help in uh, assessing our patients, knowing what the problem is, communicating it to the doctor, and then giving the treatment as per doctor's order. So, yun po yung mga pwede din natin gawin as nurses in maternal and child nursing. And aside from that, we also help in health rehabilitation. We prevent further complications from our illness as much as possible. So after an illness at nag-recover na po yung pasyente, tutulungan po natin mag-rehabilitate yung patient so that they can return to their normal lives and their activities of daily living. So, ang gagawin natin, kunwari yung isang pasyenteng na stroke or pasyenteng... Uh, Kunwari, nagkaroon siya ng pregnancy-induced hypertension, tapos nag-high blood na siya after niyang manganak. We give them the proper knowledge and training so that they can still undergo with their lives with or without this disease. So, yun po yung mga responsibilities, roles, and focus natin as nurses. Now, what am I trying to say? We have to remember that we nurses are health promoters in obstetrics and pediatrics. We guide the mothers and kids towards well-being. In obstetrics, we educate pregnant mothers about healthy habits, monitoring their health, uh, improving their nutrition, and even providing them emotional support throughout pregnancy. In pediatrics naman, we educate the parents of the child regarding the health of the kid, regarding vaccinations, the different growth milestones, and we offer guidance even on the emotional well-being of these children. We can only do that if we work together. We need to collaborate with other members of the medical team to help during childbirth and providing essential newborn and child care. We also need to empower our patients. Kasi nga po, hindi naman po lagi-lagi na nandun tayo to care for our patients. So, as maternal and child health nurses, 
we also need to empower our families, the families that we cater with the proper knowledge and skills so they can make healthcare decisions that are better in promoting healthier lives, not just for the individual client, but also to their families and their growing children. So yan po yung mga roles, focuses, and responsibilities natin as a future maternal and child health nurses. Now with that in mind, I want you to remember that the goal and philosophy of maternal and child nursing is rooted in the promotion and maintenance of optimal family health to ensure cycles of optimum childbearing and child rearing. Anong ibig sabihin nito? Maternal and child health nursing is not just focused on the health of pregnant women and the health of these growing children. It also focuses on family health. Bakit? Because we believe as maternal and child health nurses, naniniwala po tayo that a healthy family is a foundation of a healthy society. Bakit po? Because if a family is healthy, okay, yung magiging anak ng mga parents na nandun sa family na yon ay mabigiging healthy newborn and infants din. As you can see in the diagram, if the family is healthy, kung makain sila ng mabuti, maganda yung kanilang lifestyle, wala silang masyadong stress, they give birth to a healthy child. That healthy infant grows up to be a healthy child. And when the child grows up and still they maintain their health, that healthy child becomes a healthy adolescent. Okay? And then when that adolescent is also given the proper guidance, okay, when it comes to growth, nutrition, mental well-being, magiging healthy adult din po yan. And when that healthy adult gets pregnant and they are still able to maintain their health, ang mangyayari po is that they can also start their own healthy family. So the cycle goes on and on and on. And as maternal and child health nurses, it is our responsibility to create as many healthy families as we could. These goals and philosophies will guide us in providing compassionate and effective care by ensuring the health and well-being of both our mothers, our children, and our family that are under our care. Lagi niyong tatandaan that our goals and philosophies as maternal and child health nurses is also rooted in holistic approach. Ang ibig sabihin niyan, we treat mothers and children as a whole individual. We also address their physical, emotional, and social needs. Hindi lang po tayo nagpo-focus sa sakit ng isang pasyente, sa physical ailments niya. We also focus on their physical, emotional, social, even spiritual needs. Nagpo-focus din tayo because our care should be holistic. Aside from that, like I said a while ago, the care that we provide is also family-centered. We recognize families as integral to care. And we involve the families of these children and pregnant mothers in the decision-making and support. Apart from that, lagi nyo ding tatandaan ano, that our practice, our goals and philosophies are evidence-based as well. We use the latest research and clinical evidence to provide the best care that is needed by the pregnant women, the children, and their families. And apart from that, magiging maganda lang po yung services na naipro-provide natin sa ating mga pasyente, sa ating mga families. We will only be able to create healthy families if we are culturally sensitive. Anong ibig sabihin niyan? We are able to respect the diverse cultures and beliefs when we deliver our care to these families. We ensure that we give appropriate and respectful care to the different families that we Cater. So yun po yung mga pwede nating gawin so that we are able to create healthier families. Now malamang nagtataka kayo kung ano yung mga pwede nating gawin to make our care for our patients more family-centered. Now, in family-centered care, assessment must include both family and individual data. Anong ibig sabihin nito? 
when you are taking care of a pregnant woman, you do not just assess her as an individual patient. Tinatake natin yung kanyang data, yung kanyang mga vital signs, history, yat, yada, yada, yada. But apart from that, we also have to know something about her family. Her husband, sino yung mga kasama niya sa bahay, what are their lifestyle practices, mga health beliefs, other things like that. Kung saan siya lumaki. We also need to know these practices, these beliefs, the setup of their family so that we can individualize the care that we give them. Okay? Hindi lang po natin tinitignan yung isang babae as an individual separate client but we also have to consider her uniqueness because of her family background. So, kung yung pasyente po natin, kunwari, sinabi niya, ay, sir, galing ako sa pam mga pamilya ng mga diabetics, then maybe you can also include diabetes care and prevention to the care that you provide this pregnant client. Okay? So, yun po yung ibig sabihin ng family-centeredness in our philosophy as maternal and child health nurses. Apart from that, you also have to remember that one of our philosophies is also community-centeredness. The health of families also depends on and influences the health of communities. Ibig sabihin po nito, the families that we cater will also form the building blocks of healthy families. So the more po na healthy families yung nagagawa natin, the more change that we are able to provide in our community. Kasi sila po yung parang nagiging um, role mod models ng mga ibang members of the society pag maganda po yung mga family na inaalagaan natin, if healthy po sila. And like I said, I also mentioned this a while ago, our care is also centered on evidence-based practices. This means that we use critical knowledge, we use research to make sure that the care that we are providing to our patients really pass the test of time and are really effective as proven by both science and research. Okay, so family-centered care is about including families in healthcare decisions. Lagi niyong tatandaan yan, ha? So ulitin natin, family-centered care is about including families in healthcare decisions. We nurses should work with families to plan the care and respect the opinions of other people. Like I said, tinitignan natin yung mga decisions, mga backgrounds ng mga family members so that we can also include them in the planning of their care. And then when they make their decisions, we have to respect their opinion as well. We should help families feel empowered. We help them in become informed. And we also include them in the part of the healthcare journey of these pregnant women and pediatric patients. Okay? Lagi niyong tatandaan that better understanding leads to better care and happier families and patients. Now, in the community-centered philosophy naman, it emphasizes on the impact of the community environment on maternal, child, and family health. Lagi niyong tatandaan that it takes a village to raise a child. It also takes a village to take care of a pregnant woman. So meron at meron pong impact yung environment na tinitirhan ng ating mga pasyente sa kanilang health. Okay? And that is the reason why we also need to create healthier families and healthier communities para po yung mga nandun sa society na yun, they grow up to be healthy. By considering environment and the community, we nurses can create better, more meaningful care that improves the health of moms, kids, and families in the long run. Lagi niyong tatandaan na according to Florence Nightingale, malaki po yung epekto ng environment sa care, ng, uh, sa health ng ating mga individual clients. Apart from that, we use evidence-based methods in maternal and child nursing. Bakit kailangan tayong gumagamit ng mga research-proven na effective and efficient practices sa maternal and child nursing? Because we want to ensure safe and effective care for our growing children and our pregnant and expectant mothers. 
The use of evidence-based practice relies on proven practices and it leads to better outcomes for both moms and kids. Kasi nga po, proven effective by research. This approach prevents harm to our patients and promotes learning and ultimately improves the patient health. So yan po yung mga uh, philosophies natin as maternal and child nurses. It is also our responsibility as future maternal and child health nurses to become advocates for the rights of the unborn child and the pregnant woman. A maternal and child health nurse serves as an advocate to protect the rights of all family members and that includes the rights of the unborn fetus. Kaya nga po dapat lagi tayong pro-life as maternal and child health nurses and we also look into the health and well-being of both the pregnant woman, the vulnerable populations including women and children, and also the unborn fetus. So yan po yung isa sa ating philosophy din as maternal and child health nurses. Aside from that, we maternal and child health nurses should include high degree of independent nursing functions because teaching and counseling are major interventions. Anong ibig sabihin nito? We should not just be very skillful when it comes to the dispense of our duties and responsibilities in the clinical area. Hindi lang po dahil sa magaling tayong maglagay ng swero, magpaanak ng pasyente, mag-assess, ganito ganyan, ay matasabi nating magaling na tayo as maternal and child health nurses. Hindi po ganon. We should also focus on independent nursing functions which include teaching and counseling. Bakit po? Because one of our roles and responsibilities as maternal and child health nurses is to provide education, information, and teaching, and even counseling to our patients so that they can have a sense of empowerment and independence. Kasi po, hindi pwedeng lagi-laging nagde-depend po sila sa atin. We have to remember that we are taking care of expectant mothers who are, who are entering motherhood. Kaya sila po yung mga magiging primary care providers ng ating mga pediatric patients. And it will serve us good if we can also include these mothers in the care of their children. Kaya nga po, importante po ang health teaching, health education, and counseling as part of our philosophies. Kaya po, kapag kayo ay naging registered nurses na, you should be able to express yourselves and communicate well with our patients so that you can empower them, equip them with the necessary knowledge, skills, and attitude to also help us in the delivery of the care that we need to give to our patients. Kung naaalala nyo pa kanina, I also mentioned that we maternal and child health nurses are superheroes because we are also able to secure the next generation. Okay? Ine-ensure natin that the next generations are healthy. Bakit? Because promoting health and disease prevention are important nursing roles because these protect the health of the next generation. Kung tayo po ay involved in the care of all pregnant women at naiiwasan po natin yung mga congenital diseases, nag-guide natin yung mga expectant mothers natin regarding the do's and don'ts during pregnancy, magaganda po yung ating mga delivery outcomes. Yung mga anak nila, lalaking healthy, walang mga abnormalities, and because of that, we are able to create a generation that are healthy and productive citizens of our society. Kaya meron din po tayong roles when it comes to safeguarding the future of our society. So you have to take your role as the future maternal and child nurses for uh, not for granted, but you have to take them seriously kasi meron at meron po tayong responsibilidad to ensure the health of the next generation. Aside from that, maternal and child health nurses serve as important resources for families during childbearing and child rearing because during that time na nagpapalaki yung nanay ng kanyang anak or during that time na pregnant po yung ating pasyente, that is a very stressful time in their journey. Sobrang stressful daw po magpalaki ng anak 
or maging buntis. For nine months, there are so many uh, risks involved during pregnancy. Habang lumalaki yung bata at habang katatapos mga anak si nanay, ang dami ding risk na nangyayari sa kanila. So what happens? Both the mother and child are in stressful conditions. And dito po tayo pumapasok as maternal and child nurses, we are important resource for the family. Anong resources po ang pwede nating ibigay? Knowledge, information, guidance. That's number one. Aside from that, we are also able to give them the proper care that they need. For example, proper assessments and evaluation. Nagbibigay din tayo ng mga gamot, vaccination, and other things so that they can make their well-being intact. So those are also part of our philosophies as future maternal and child health nurses. Lagi nyong tatandaan that in the dispense of your care as maternal and child health nurses, kahit pa yung ating mga training, yung mga knowledge na nakukuha natin, come from westernized countries. Kasi karamihan po sa mga books na ginagamit natin ay galing sa western culture. You have to remember that you should still be culturally sensitive. Lagi nyong tatandaan na ang ating mga pasyente, iba-iba ang kultura, and we do not have to impose whatever it is that we know, whatever it is that we learned in the culture of the families that we are taking care of. Dapat po, we have to consider cultural sensitivity. We have to respect their cultural identity as our patients. Lagi nyong tatandaan, personal, cultural, and religious attitudes and beliefs of a client or a patient can influence the meaning and impact of childbearing and childrearing in their families. Ang ibig sabihin niyan, we also have to include or consider their cultural identity when it comes to the planning that we give or planning of care that we give to our patients. Ang ibig ko lang sabihin po dito is that hindi po one size fits all ang binibigay nating care. The care that you provide to an iglesia ni Cristo client versus the care that you provide to a Catholic or the care that you uh, provide to a practicing Jehovah's Witness, lahat-lahat po ito dapat iba-iba. It should be tailor-made to fit the cultural, personal, and religious needs of your patients. Okay? Aside from that, circumstances such as illness or pregnancy are meaningful only in the context of a total life. Anong ibig sabihin nito? You also have to consider that hindi lang po personal, cultural, and religious factors yung consider natin in planning the care of our patients. We also have to consider their familial histories, their experiences, dahil po iba-iba yung ating mga pasyente. And iba-iba po ang tingin nila sa mga aspects na nangyayari sa kanilang mga buhay. Huwag nating sasabihin na, Mrs. ang arte mo, buntis ka lang, mga nganak ka lang, ang arte-arte mo, eh hindi naman ako ganyan, ka-stress noong ako ay nabuntis. Or, Mrs. karamihan naman ng mga pasyente namin, hindi ganyan ka-arte. Hindi po pwede yon. You always have to remember po na iba-iba tayo ng experiences kahit pa po same condition ang pinagdadaanan natin. We have different interpretations of that illness or a condition. So yung mga iba, mayayaman siguro, happy silang pregnant sila. They're very joyful. Gusto nilang nagpapacheck up and that is okay. May mga iba naman na poor, marami ng anak or baka biktima ng rape that they are pregnant. So, they experience pregnancy differently. So, what am I trying to say is that you have to be sensitive to the patients that you have. Kasi hindi po sila pare-pareho ng experience when it comes to their pregnancy. And lastly, maternal and child health nursing is a challenging role. You have to remember that. Mahirap po. Uh, for us nurses, especially sa inyong mga bata-bata pa, it's gonna be a very challenging role and a major factor in keeping families well and optimally functioning. So sa dami po ng mga roles and responsibilities on our shoulder in keeping both families, pregnant women, children, adolescents, and even the society healthy, challenging po talaga ang ating roles. But 
with the correct guidance, with the correct practice and proper mindset, I know that you will enjoy your future role as future maternal and child health nurses. Hello! Nakikinig pa ba kayo? As promised, I will be dropping specific instructions for your attendance. So, ang, at, ang uh, scavenger hunt natin ngayon is that you have to take a selfie with your best friend or send a selfie with your best friend and give whatever caption it is that you want in our Facebook Messenger. So, paano ma-check yung attendance natin ngayon? You have to send a picture with your best friend and also create a caption describing why that person is your best friend. Pero wag nyong isashare dito ah, para mahuli natin kung sino yung mga totoong nakikinig or hindi. So that is your attendance uh, instruction for this week. Continue with the lesson. Pag-aralan naman natin ngayon yung mga maternal and child health goals and standards because there is a standard standard of care that we nurses should follow. Now, comprehensive pediatric care focuses on helping children and their families and communities achieve their optimum health potentials. Ang ibig sabihin po nito, we nurses should guide them, guide all families, pregnant women, growing children, para po ma-reach nila yung kanilang optimum health and so that they can also reach their fullest of potentials. Pag healthy po yung mga bata, sila po ay nagiging matalino, sila po yung nagiging next president, next doctors, next contributors to the society. That is what we mean when we say that we want optimum health and reach the maximum potentials of our clientele. This is best achieved within the framework of family-centered care and the nursing process, including primary, secondary, and tertiary care coordinated across healthcare and community settings. Sanang ibig sabihin nito? We combine family-centered care and our nursing process to create healthier families Aside from that, we also include primary, secondary, and tertiary care. So, ibig sabihin, nakiki-coordinate po tayo on all um, aspects of the healthcare community. Mapa-primary man yan, secondary, and tertiary man yan. We coordinate with these other healthcare providers to ensure that our patients are really made healthy. And aside from that, we also coordinate with the people in the community to create healthier environments para po mas maganda yung growth, development, and well-being of not just our pregnant women, children, but also the whole family and community. So gaya nga ng lagi kong sinasabi kanina, nurses educate families on healthy habits, providing them emotional support, and ensure that their needs are being met. We always collaborate with other member, members of the medical teams and communities. We guide families towards their best health. And we also empower families and children to reach their health goals and reach their optimum potentials. Now, when the community and health sector team up in maternal and child nursing, so community, hospitals, and RHUs, nagti-team up po yan, they combine medical knowledge and community resources and that will cover both health and social needs of our patients. So, mas nagiging holistic po yung care natin if we combine community and health sector in providing care and assistance to our patients. You have to remember that this teamwork catches problems early, making outcomes better. It also ensures everyone can have access to care using community insights. Kasi nga po, nag-combine si community resources natin and si ating health sector. So yung mga BHWs natin or barangay health workers, yung mga community health nurses natin, they are able to go to the different communities and even reach the farthest places in our community. Therefore, lahat po ng ating mga clientils they are being reached, okay? So together, we make uh, maternal and child nursing, uh, we make sure that MCN really works and this will lead to healthier lives for moms, 
kids, families, and societies. So sir, ano ba yung mga standards of care na sinasabi nyo? So we have different levels of standards of care, especially in the dispense of our duties and responsibilities as maternal and child health nurses when it comes to reaching our goals and standards. Ang number one standard po natin is assessment. The pediatric nurse always collects pertinent patient data. We nurses have a crucial part in evaluating pediatric patients. We collect essential health data, which includes vital signs, medical backgrounds of our patients, and developmental progress to spot or to uh, point out any potential health concerns or conditions being experienced by the patient. Always remember po na sa ating pediatric um, nursing, yung mga pasyente po natin, they are not able to express their needs, their concerns. Kaya po, ang basis dapat natin in our diagnosis is proper assessment. Okay? So, isa yan sa ating standard of care and responsibility to properly assess our patients in order for us to understand what is going on to our patient. By observing and conversing with the child and even their parents, Nurses like us can ensure precise assessment and deliver, deliver optimal care depending, of course, on our assessed needs of the patient. Number two po is standard. Number two standard is a diagnosis. Okay? The pediatric nurse analyzes the assessment data or yung mga information that we have gathered during our assessment in determining the proper patient diagnosis. You have to remember no, na in our team, we nurses are crucial in finding out what could be bothering our young patients. As I said a while ago, they still have trouble communicating their concerns to the nurses. Hindi pa po nakakapagsalita karamihan sa ating mga pasyente. And it is up to us to be able to assess our patients and then process this information in order for us to create the best diagnosis to our patients. Okay? So, we also have to assist our patients with the different laboratory tests like taking blood or doing scans which will help doctors understand what's happening inside the child's body. By closely observing the child and by closely communicating with their families, we are able to provide valuable information that contributes to the best diagnosis by the doctor. Altogether, as a healthcare team, we work like detectives in diagnosing our patients. We collaborate with doctors to solve the mystery of the child's health condition. So yan po yung assessment and diagnosis as standard 1 and standard 2. Pangatlo po is standard 3, which is outcome identification. The pediatric nurse identifies expected outcomes that are individualized to the child and the family. Anong ibig sabihin nito? We nurses will play a crucial role in defining the desired results for the pediatric patient. Ano ba yung gustong mangyari ng pasyente? Okay, nag tayo. We were able to identify the problem. Now, what does the patient or their families want? What are the outcomes that they are expecting? So again, we nurses play a crucial role in defining the desired result for the pediatric patient. Ibig sabihin niyan, we work alongside the medical team to establish the specific goals for the child's health advancement. Through careful observation and conversations with the child's family, we are able to contribute to creating a well-suited care and strategy to achieve the outcomes that they have identified. So this approach guarantees that the child's individual requirements are addressed and ultimately resulting in improved health outcomes. So overall, we hold a pivotal position in charting the course towards the child's betterment. For example, meron akong kakilala na yung anak niya, 3 years old na, hindi pa rin nakakapagsalita. So that patient came to me and asked, ano yung mga pwede kong gawin? Gusto ko sanang makapagsalita na yung anak ko. Because 3 years old na siya, until now, she is not yet speaking. So what did I do? I told her to consult a doctor. And then the doctor, so 
uh, sinamahan ko siya sa doctor and then uh, we told them the the information required by the doctor and then sinabi ng doctor ay parang meron siyang delayed speech development. So what did the doctor do? Ano ba yung gusto niyong mangyari? So doc, gusto ko sanang malaman kung kailan siya makakapagsalita or makakapagsalita pa po ba siya. So what did the doctor do? The doctor referred us to a speech therapist para po matulungan yung bata to speak because that is the identified outcome that is needed by the patient. So tumutulong din po tayo for our patients to know what they really desire as outcomes in the health of the pregnant and the growing child. So yun po. Moving on to our standard four, that includes planning. The pediatric nurse develops a plan of care that prescribes interventions to to the obtained expected outcomes. So nasabi na ng ating mga pasyente kung ano yung mga outcomes na gusto nilang, uh, gusto nilang mangyari. So nurses like us have a big role in coming up with plans for our young patients. So we plan the care of our pediatric patients. Like I said a while ago, we team up with doctors to create effective care strategies. By understanding the child's situation, kasi nga nag tayo, and by involving their families, kasi nga uh, in-include natin sila sa outcomes identification, we are able to help design a treatment plan that fits just right. So, pasok sa gustong gawin ng doktor, pasok sa gustong mangyari ng pasyente. Dun po tayo pumapasok in the plan of care of our patients. Okay? This way, we make sure that the care approach is customized to what the child needs, what the family wants, and that will lead to better health. In the end, our inputs will play a key part in mapping out the road to the child's recovery. Kasi kahit po gaano kaganda yung strategy na sinasabi ni doktor, oh, ito yung gagawin natin para mas maging healthy yung bata, oh, ito yung dapat ipapainom natin, ito yung mga activities na gagawin ng bata. If that is not, if the family were not included in the plan of care, hindi din yan susundin ng ating mga patients. Kasi nga po, they were not included in the plan of care. But, if we include these families in the plan of care of our pediatric patients, sabi nila, ah, part ako ng planning. So, ibig sabihin, susundin ko yan kasi napag-isipan ko na din yan eh. Ginusto ko din yan eh. So, since they were involved in the planning, mas mapapadali po yung ating implementation. Alright? So, next po, standard five is implementation. The pediatric nurse implements the interventions that are identified in the plan of care. So what happens? Nurses will play an essential role in making the plans work for young patients. So ang gagawin natin, so na plano na natin yung gagawin sa ating pasyente, we will now be implementing them step by step as identified in the plan of care. So like I said, we team up with doctors to carry out effective care strategies. For example, if a child needs uh, medicines regularly, no, we give it to them and keep an eye on how they're doing. So sabi ni doctor, oh, bigyan mo ng uh, antibiotics yung bata kasi meron siyang uh, ganito, may conium staining, baka magkaroon siya ng, uh, ng secondary pneumonia. Okay, because of the meconium staining, kaya kailangan niyang mabigyan ng ampicillin gentamicin. So the doctor is already uh, implementing o bibigyan ng antibiotics. So what will we do? I-implement natin yon. Tayo ang magbibigay ng antibiotics sa ating mga pasyente. We make sure that we follow the dose prescribed by the doctor. We also follow that we mo we also make sure that we follow the proper route saan ipapasok yung antibiotics. And we also make sure that we monitor our patients. At pag nakita natin na hindi nag improve yung ating pasyente, we will refer them to the doctor. So yun po, part po yan ng implementation natin, no? By keeping an eye out on how our patients are doing. Now, by really understanding the child's situation and by involving their their families, we make sure that the treatment plan suits them well. So, pasok po sa mga pasyente or sa kanilang family and ibig sabihin po niyan is that the implementation will become easier. This might mean teaching parents how to manage a special diet or do exercise at home. So, ibig sabihin po nito, part ng implementation po natin is hindi lang po 
sa pagbibigay ng proper antibiotics or medicines, hindi lang po yun. Part din po ng planning natin is to ensure na consistent po yung pag-increase ng health status ng ating mga pasyente. So that may mean teaching parents how to manage a special diet for their children. Ay, misis, yung anak nyo kasi maraming allergies. So meron po siyang allergy ngayon at maaari pong yung allergies niya babalik po yan pag nakauwi na kayo if you are not aware of the Uh, the triggers of your child. So, tuturuan natin sila para po continuous pa rin po yung nangyayaring improvement ng health ng ating mga pasyente. So, this personalized approach ensures that the care matches the child's needs leading to better health. In short, we're like drive, the driving force making the journey to recovery happen. So, yan po yung ginagawa natin sa ating implementation. Okay? So, lastly will be Evaluation. The pediatric nurse evaluates the child's and family's progress towards attainment of the outcomes that they have identified. Anong ibig sabihin nito? So, nagplano tayo, we implemented the care, titignan natin ngayon kung effective ba yung na-implement natin na nursing care sa ating mga pasyente so that in the event that it is good, okay, ay, gumaganda yung health ng pasyente, okay, continue. Pero in the event na sinabi ng doktor na or sinabi ng pasyente, Sir, wala naman akong nakikitang improvement. Ano ang gagawin ko? In the event that that happens, we will again revisit our plan, make adjustments, implement it, and then evaluate it until we arrive at a certain uh, plan that suits already the needs of the patient and that caters or addresses the concerns raised by the patient and their families. So, gaya ng sinabi ko, we nurses have a crucial role in assessing how well things are going for our pediatric patients. We work alongside doctors to review the effectiveness of the care plans that we have implemented. Titignan natin, effective ba talaga yung antibiotic or hindi? Effective ba yung modification of the diet or hindi? So, titignan natin how effective the implemented uh, procedures and plans were. By understanding the patient situation, uh, we are able to gauge the treatment if it works as intended or not. Uh, so, for instance, no, for example lang, if a child is undergoing physical therapy, we track their progress and adjust the exercise as needed. Kunwari yung bata, hindi siya makalakad. And then sinabi natin, okay, punta ka sa PT, ganito po, or ganito yung gawin mong exercise. So every week, we will check if there is progress na nangyayari. Kasi if there is a progress that happens, then ituloy-tuloy lang. Pero after a month, after three months na ginagawa yung exercise, hindi pa rin nagre-respond positively yung pasyente, then there must be something wrong with the chosen uh, procedure na gagawin sa pasyente. The chosen plan, the chosen implemented na care sa pasyente. So, we have to readjust. Okay? Now, this personalized approach ensures that the care that we provide aligns with the child's needs and will lead to health outcomes. So, in essence, we're like the compass. Nurses like us serve as the compass that guides the path of the child's recovery. Because of our evaluation, masasabi natin na, Dok, parang hindi po effective, hindi nagre-respond. Sasabi ng doktor, okay, we will change the plan of care. We will have another approach to the procedure. So, yun po yung mga standards na pinafollow po natin. Now, what we discussed a while ago is the standards of care that we provide our patients. Sa next slides naman po, we will be talking about the standards of professional performance as maternal and child nurses. Okay? Standard one is you have to remember quality care. The pediatric nurse systematically evaluates the quality and effectiveness of pediatric nursing practice. Ibig sabihin nito, we nurses are expected to provide safe, effective, and compassionate care to all our patients. And we ensure that their physical and emotional well-being are considered. This includes adhering to evidence-based practices and continuously improving our skill. Because the only way that we can ensure na quality po yung binibigay nating care sa ating mga pasyente is when we always, we continuously improve our skills 
and knowledge. Kasi baka mayat maya yung mga ginagawa nating practices sa hospital is not anymore accepted by the global health community. So we have to make sure po na yung mga practices natin are still up to date para po masabi natin talagang quality care yung binibigay natin. Aside from that, standard 2 is performance appraisal. The pediatric nurse evaluates his or her own nursing practice in relation to professional practice standards and relevant statutes and regulations. Ibig sabihin nito, we nurses are accountable for evaluating our own practice, seeking feedback, and participating in self-assessment and performance reviews to maintain and enhance our competence. So, ibig sabihin po nito, if we feel like we're not yet confident when it comes to giving IV or intravenous medications to our patients, edi magpatulong tayo. Or we can ask our supervisors, Sir, please come and observe me if I am properly uh, following the protocols or procedures so that I can improve myself in the future. Yan po yung tinatawag natin na performance appraisal. It is our responsibility to have a looking glass at ourselves. Tignan natin ang sarili natin. Are we really performing up to par with the expected na duties and responsibilities and competence sa na expected natin na nanggagaling sa mga maternal and child nurses. So look at yourself. Have other people look at you so that they can tell you what they think, mga feedback, so that you can continuously improve yourself. Like I said, the only way that we can uh, give quality care to our patients is that when we are continuously learning and improving. Number three standard po is education. Okay? The pediatric nurse acquires and maintains current knowledge and competencies in pediatric nursing practice. Anong ibig sabihin nito? If you want to take a role in maternal and child nursing, dapat po ay meron kang sense of expertise. And how will you be able to become an expert sa maternal and child nursing? You have to go for advanced studies. Magkaroon ka dapat ng higher educational attainment. Go for master's degree. Like, I, like for me, I went for maternal and child uh, nursing as my major in my Master of Arts in Nursing. Hindi lang doon. Gusto ko din maging expert din when it comes to education. So what did I do? Apart from graduating from my Doctor of Philosophy in Nursing, I am also now taking education units, Doctor of Education degree. Bakit ko ginagawa yun? Because I know that when I want to be good at something, I should continuously uh, embark on a journey of self-improvement and education and training. So yun mga pwede natin gawin so that we can improve ourselves, we have to commit ourselves to continuous education, okay? Or professional development. So pwede kang mag-enroll in advanced studies. You can also join training, seminars, and conferences. And you also can... Uh, help become mentored by other experts. So yun po yung mga pwede nating gawin along education. Like I said, nurses have a responsibility to engage in ongoing professional development, staying current in healthcare advancement. So dapat po abreast tayo with the different advancements or changes in our practice. And it is also our responsibility to share our knowledge with our colleagues, with our patients and our families. So that those are the first three standards of professional performance. Standard four is collegiality. Okay? The pediatric nurse interacts and contributes to the professional development of their peers or workmates, colleagues, and other healthcare providers. So ibig sabihin niyan, when we speak of collegiality, it has something to do with teamwork, collaboration, or it also has something to do with helping other people, mentorship. So yun po. When we speak of collegiality, it involves fostering a positive and supportive work environment where individuals work together harmoniously to achieve a common goal. So sa collegiality, 
It emphasizes on open communication with other members of the healthcare team, collaboration, and mutual respect among our colleagues and workmates regardless of their roles or positions. So, dapat po, lahat-lahat po ng members ng ating team, kahit pa mataas or mababa yung kanilang rangko, we still give them respect, we still collaborate with them, and we also communicate with them. Now, this approach or this standard enhances teamwork. It promotes knowledge sharing and it ultimately contributes to improved outcomes in various fields including healthcare or um, uh, patient safety. So yun po, that is collegiality, helping one another improve their skill sets and knowledge through communication, collaboration, and mutual respect. Standard 5 naman po is what we call ethics. When we speak of ethics, the pediatric nurses' assessment, actions, and recommendations on behalf of children and their families are determined in ethical manner. Anong ibig sabihin po nito? We dispense our duties and responsibilities in a manner that respects our patients. Hindi dahil sa hindi nakakapagsalita yung mga pasyente mo, kinukurot-kurot mo sila, or uh, dahil hindi nagre-reklamo yung newborn baby, hindi ka na nagbibigay ng proper care. Hindi po. We always make sure that the service that we provide are rooted in justice, in beneficence, or doing good, and not doing harm to our patients. Ang ibig ko lang sabihin is that nurses must adhere to ethical principles and standards. We uphold the patient's confidentiality, hindi natin sila chinichismis, we advocate for their patient's rights, and we also maintain integrity in our practice. So that's standard five, ethics. Standard six po is collaboration. The pediatric nurse collaborates with the child, the family, and other healthcare providers in providing client care. Like I said a while ago, na mentioned ko to a while ago, that it takes a village to raise a child. In the same manner that it takes the whole healthcare team to ensure, ensure the health and well-being of our patients. So in collaboration, we nurses are expected to collaborate effectively with other healthcare professionals, our patients as well, and even their families to achieve optimal patient outcomes. And this will improve communication. Siyempre, mas maganda yung collaboration mo pag nag-uusap talaga kayo para alam nyo kung ano yung gusto ng isa't isa. You also have to have respect, not just in the person as a whole, but also towards their opinions, on their culture, on their beliefs, on their upbringings, perspectives. And you also have to have a shared decision. Okay, so dapat po, yung decision-making ng mga pasyente natin, we support them. We include whatever it is that they want in the care sa ating care plan. As long as it is not derogatory or it will not um, increase the risk of our patients, by all means, include natin yung ano ang gusto ng ating mga pasyente. Because that is standard 6, collaboration. We also have to follow standard 7, which is research. The pediatric nurse contributes to nursing and pediatric healthcare through the use of research methods and findings. Like I said a while ago, kailangan po natin ginagamit ang evidence-based practice sa ating dispense of care so that we are sure that the care that we are providing is up-to-date and proven effective sa ating mga research studies and mga clinical trials and mga meta-analysis. Now, we nurses are encouraged to use evidence-based practice. We also have to participate in research activities. So, papunta pa yan sa authorship of research, helping in the collection of data, interpreting information, mga statistical findings. We have to be involved in those kinds of things so that we can continuously improve the care that we provide our patients. It is our responsibility to incorporate research findings in the clinical decision-making to enhance patient care. So that's a long research. Number eight po is resource utilization. The pediatric nurse should consider factors that are related to safety and effectiveness and cost in planning 
and delivering patient care. Anong ibig sabihin nito? Dapat po tayong mga nurses para tayong mga floor managers. We have to know the different resources that we have when it comes to time, sa ating mga staff nurses, mga stocks or mga gamit sa hospital. These resources should be uh, utilized properly in order for us to reach the desired goals and uh, health outcomes of our patients. We nurses should involve ourselves in the utilization of proper resources. So resource utilization in nursing involves effective and efficient management of various resources to provide high quality patient care. And this will include optimizing the use of time, staff nurses, medical supplies, equipment, and even finances. Nurses must make informed decisions to ensure that the resources are allocated appropriately to meet the patient's needs while minimizing waste and maintaining patient safety. Example, sa hospital dito sa amin, ang daming mga nurse up uh, mga pasyente sa pediatric ward dahil po uso na naman ang dengue fever. So, anong ginawa ng chief nurse? Yung mga areas wherein konti lang yung mga pasyente, like for example, konti lang yung ICU or konti lang yung mga pasyente sa OB. What will the nurse do? In proper resource utilization, si chief nurse na yun, sasabihin niya, kailangan ng mga pediatric nurses ang tulong dahil ang dami nilang pasyente, they will not be able to provide the proper care and services sa dami ng mga pasyente at sa konti ng mga nurses. So what will the chief nurse do? She will pull out nurses from areas wherein there is no need for them, ilalagay nila kung saan sila kailangan. Bakit po gagawin yon? Because that is proper resource utilization. Gamitin natin kung yung mga available resources natin so that we can meet the desired goals. And aside from that, we are able to minimize waste and risk sa ating mga pasyente. You have to remember that you will become future chief nurses someday. And effective resource utilization in nursing will help enhance patient outcomes, improve workflow efficiency, and ultimately contribute to the overall success of your hospital and to your colleagues as well, to your healthcare organization. So that's standard 7, research, and standard 8, resource utilization. And that concludes our first ever pre-recorded lecture for the subject NCM 107, Concepts in Pediatrics, where we talked about framework for maternal and child health nursing. We still have one video more uh, with this topic, so I hope that you also finish the next video. Maraming maraming salamat everyone for listening, and I hope that you enjoy the rest of the day. Please make sure to review your notes and also uh, review the video, rewatch the video because a quiz is coming in your Google Classroom. With that being said, maraming maraming salamat everyone. Have a great day.